Welcome to Never Have I Ever, episode 18. Woo! I cannot believe we've been doing this show for 18 years. No, 18 weeks, but it feels like it. Uh, I'm very excited to have this star-studded cast uh, before me tonight. And I know how Zoom works, so I know if I point over here, I'm going to introduce this girl because everything's opposite. Um, she, her website is clubkellyshabari.com. She is oh. a famous porn star. She was the first plus size girl ever to be in penthouse. Kelly Shabari. Hello. Good day, everybody. <laughs> she's a virgin on the show. And over in this corner, she's a comedian. She writes for the Work It Health blog. And also her podcast is called the Comics Book Club. Rebecca Rush. Hello. And in the middle spot, if this was Brady Bunch, this would be the Alice spot. Um, she's a porn star as well. Cam girl phenomenon. She, her Twitter is Ember Snow XXX. That's E M B E R S N O W X X X. Ember Snow. Good to have you. Another Hi. never have I ever virgin. And in this corner, he's one of my favorite people from Compound Media. You can see him. Uh, Often on the East Side Dave show, Bobby Tamburo. Woo, Bobby! <laughs> um, loving the facial <laughs> hair during COVID, anything goes. And in this corner, <laughs> another one of my favorite people from Compound Media. She is the producer for Morning, which is a morning show on Compound Media, Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. EST. She's also the producer of Sasha Serbel's stand-up comedy album, Artificial Intelligence, Luby Popovic. Woohoo! <laughs> So excited and, to be here. I'm so excited to have you. And I'm so excited you could do it last minute. Because sometimes people Yay. last minute. <laughs> Anything for you. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. And last but not least, you've seen him on Sirius XM. He is the host of the Domestic Disturbance Podcast, Mike Keegan. Hey, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Chrissy. So excited to have you. All right. Everybody knows the rules. This is Never Have I Ever. This is a drinking game, you know, in the general sense for the people watching at home. But if anybody on this panel doesn't drink or whatever, it's okay. You don't have to drink. If you're watching at home and you don't drink, you don't have to drink. This is about fun and stories and getting to know each other. We do not need anybody relapsing on this Zoom. It happened once. <laughs> it doesn't have to happen again. Although that was a fun episode. But yeah, drink water, drink whatever. Some people smoke, some people eat candy. Eh, do whatever makes you happy. Um, never have I ever, it'll start out by saying, never have I ever vacuumed my whole apartment. That's where I'm at because I've run out of all my examples. And if you've ever vacuumed your whole apartment, you're going to take a drink and then tell the story of the thing. So it's like, you know, never have I ever sounds like you haven't done it, but say the things that you have done because then you run the risk of no one having done the thing and then it's mm -hmm. not Okay, guys. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, boy. <laughs> super pumped. Um, never have I ever do, 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 played video games. Do, 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 I'm a nerd. Mm. That's a firm no for me. Wow, Luby, look at you. I know. <laughs> Bragging. No, I really like. I played Donkey Kong when I was twelve, and that was pretty much it. All right, <laughs> my That's cute. I really gave up on that. I really enjoy playing, um, like Super Mario, with uh, my boyfriend and his nine-year-old son. And I've interest. I've noticed some interesting characteristics about, like Princess Peach in particular. She has like, like by herself, all this power right she can float up on her dress she can fucking fly up over all the obstacles but if she gets like um you know like a feather comes down and turns her into like the raccoon version of herself which is actually like toadette right toadette is like the pink version of toad which is like the red mushroom and so like when princess peach gets fucking knocked with something she turns into this like pink toad thing but like when she's in her peach princess form she can do all this fucking awesome shit but then she'll get a star or she'll get a feather and, and it actually kind of makes her like 
a little bit worse than she was in her <laughs> natural form, which I was like, is this something that- It's a metaphor I, for life. Uh, yeah, the more you get, the worse of a woman you happen. become. Yeah. I thought, I actually forgot about uh, Princess Peach turning into something different yeah. and to lose her powers with every, kind oh my God. Zebra. It's been a while. It's yeah. been a while since I yeah. played Mario. And, and like, I should have not forgotten about this had I not been like playing this, you know, as a grown woman, like the raccoon version of Toadette is what, like is less that? impressive than just regular Princess Peach. <laughs> So that got me pretty angry, and that makes me kind of no fun to play with because I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is how good she is on her own, you know. And I, I played a lot of video games until I was about 15, and then I discovered Pussy and Beer. Well, look at you, Mike. Ooh. So now my girlfriend has a five year old, so I play video games with her. So I'm back. Aww. That's good. I feel like that's the only excuse. Like, if you have a kid or you're around kids, but I don't know. Like, I think guys maybe like, play. what about you, Bobby? Like, I don't yeah, I was just say, fuck you. Video games are fun. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, like, guys, what guys play video games and girls watch uh, house real housewives. That's that's what it's happens. Mind life. numbing, it's fun, it helps you unwind from a hard day. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's not like I put a lot of time into it or invest a lot of money. Like, I get some people that are, that's their thing, but that's not my thing. I just like to kick back and relax, you know. I actually started playing video games when I was younger, but it wasn't until much later, like when I was in high school, that I bought my own console, like a PS4, Ooh. and I started playing like Assassin's Creed. I was so, Ooh, so <laughs> I was so obsessed with like the Brotherhood version, and I would like play a multiplayer one called Manhunt. Basically, it's you're in a group. And there, there are two teams, you're in one of them. So you, you take turns in killing the other team. Mm. And then there's another round where you get to just hide. But what I didn't know when I started playing that game was you can actually stun people when you're being hunted and that gets you points. So if you have really good teammates, then you can accumulate your points and the teams. So it was so much fun that I was playing that I don't know how long. And then I got to like um, Ragnarok on a PC game. Ooh. They're like little chibi. I don't know what you got, if you guys know what chibi is, but they're like mini characters on a computer game. You get to play a different kind of class. Sorry, I'm like on total nerd <laughs> alert right now. Of, no, <laughs> go for it. A lot of boners right now, more than you know ever. So. Yeah, you get to play like a, a priest, you get to play a knight, and um, bishop, magician, all these kinds of classes, and you get to level up. And I, oh my God, I was. All of a sudden, I feel very uncool for some reason. <laughs> In here. <laughs> It's, it's, I'm just, um, those were the kinds of games I like playing. And now I just started, aside from like Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy, I also started playing some survival games where it's like every move your character makes, every decision you make can affect the ending. And they have different kinds of ending. I mean, I like that, but I don't like that at the same time because I like knowing what the true ending is going to be as opposed to, like, what the consequences are. I mean, Every it's, it's life, you know? It's life. <laughs> That's how it also works. That would give me so much anxiety. Yeah. yeah. There was a video game I played briefly. It was like... Um, what was it about? It was like this guy, was it Freddy Krueger or something? The guy with the mask and there's like campers and you can either be a camper. Or Friday the 13th. Yes. Isn't or it? That was Freddy. a great and it, and it puts you randomly in either a camper situation or like you're Freddy. And it's oh my God. scary as cool. fuck because you're running around, you're in a campsite. There's no really like safe place to hide because he's going to fucking find you and then out of nowhere you hear <laughs> and then it's like Things start to shake, and it's like it, it can give you a fucking panic attack because I had to stop playing. I was like, I can't handle this, and then he just comes and it eats your brain. Oh my god! If you get to be oh. ready, then you're like, ah, where are you? 
I'm know, assuming that's way more Vidi. fun. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to say I'm assuming that's way more fun just to go around and kill people instead of just hiding. Like that would that would like into homes. Like in Yeah, my anxiety would go through the roof. Like, no. <laughs> And then you have to get That's it. what I liked about uh, Assassin's Creed because you can actually kill people in style. Like you can, you can hide in a bush, and just wait for the right time. Like if your your the person you're about to kill is about to leave their spots, you can just like grab them and kill them. Yeah. Or you oh. can be like from a, high, a really high up building, and you're just waiting for them to just get there, and then you just jump. Sounds like my dating life. I'm trying to get sponsored by that secretly. <laughs> it's all good kelly did you drink on that one i did not because you're cool because you're a grown no, ass it, woman yeah <laughs> um okay but did everybody tell their their um video game thing who had one do, do, do. okay who wants to go next I don't know the order right now. Here's, like, my, here's no order. I guess this oh, is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never have I ever been hit on by a coworker. <laughs> oh, shit, Bobby. I'm going to drink the whole bottle for that one. Bobby, is that a hint? <laughs> I don't know. Like, we spend a lot of time together. You're trying to tell me something. Oh my God. <laughs> it was like, I have always was respected drink. you. Don't you dare me to me, okay, Bobby? <laughs> Whoa, I think God, you have all the power. I think it'd be the other way around. Is that oh, all no, of us please. on that one? It's got to be. That, that was a nice long drink. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> Let me, let me, let this gulp reflect your answer. Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, girl. Okay. Three hours later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Every job I've ever had in my life. Me too. Not because I'm irresistible. It's just because I have a vagina. That's, You're also irresistible. That's simple. What was the worst A little bit, just a little bit of resistance. Just a little touch of being irresistible, but. Yeah, it's mostly the vagina. Ladies, right? For sure. Yeah. God, like worst or time. boobs. I had like boobs not are. my direct boss, but like a boss's boss or a boss's like this was years ago, like a lateral boss, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um definitely after work cornered me and tried to kiss me, like full ball. Oh boy. Jesus. Oh, wow wow yeah. so that's that's like a, such a fucked up situation for you because you don't want to offend somebody we, oh, we always think that we did something that we let them on yeah. you know even after all what, what happened with me too i still doubt myself i still think that maybe i should have done something differently that you know he's not a creep it's me and then after a while, like, no, he's just a piece of shit. And I should have just pushed him away or said something, you know. But when you're in this situation, you're so scared to lose a job. Yeah. That's why I always play a role. Like, I'm so, like, silly little immigrant. Thank you, everyone. I'm so nice. <laughs> just don't, don't bother me. Because I know that if I think, take things seriously, it's just going to get nasty. Because if I get nasty, then it's not going to be well. I'm just going to start chopping off heads. <laughs> yeah. It, it's How'd so you get out of that situation, though? Yeah, that's, yeah. It's definitely, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely but, uh, and then I was like, yeah, I basically was like, you're being kind of inappropriate, or I think I said, like, I said, like, you love being inappropriate, don't you? And then, like, okay, over, like, a couple of, you know, weeks, it, like, okay. He the, backed off. The contact totally stopped, so yeah. I was like, good. It was also good, because it wasn't someone that I bumped into all the time anyway, and it just, but it's like, again, it's like, I don't know, it's like the female thing of like, well, I don't want to like make this guy mad at me, you know, and then what are the effects of that? So, it's all <laughs> oh good. my God. Oh, man. It happens. And then, you know, just other comics too, but I enjoy that, you know, that's just like, if like I have comics, comics don't hit on me at all. I don't know. They never hit on me. Very rarely. Hmm. Wow. I don't know. I told you this, like, I went to a rave party. I don't know if this is something to do with the conversation but I would like to share I went to a rave for the first time in like a while and everybody was offered a molly but me and I was offended like 
do I look lame? Like nobody wants to party with me. But like the girl that was next to me, she's like, oh my God, I've been offered Molly four times tonight. I was like, nobody asked me if I want Molly. And I was upset. I wouldn't take it, but I want you to ask me. But then on the other hand, like I go out to bars and people ask me for threesomes all the time. So my yeah. vibe is so weird. Like Except I don't want yes, right to party with you, but I sort of want to fuck. Like, I don't know. My vibe is weird. Like, what? Your vibe is like sex is yes, drugs no. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You actually summed it up for me. I was right. wondering how. Yeah. Thank you. I would say you're very malleable, you know? Yeah. Right? I look like I can have a good time. That for a pun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, Bobby, you drank on that. Hmm. Um, I mean, I work in retail, so, like, when I first started, it kind of happened all the time, like, back and forth. Like, it's just part of the fun of working there. Nothing, nothing ever inappropriate, really, because, like, you know what I mean? Like, I know what I'm bringing to the table, but uh, it was always kind of in good fun and always more like harmless flirting, like nothing that ever really crossed the line. We never really found ourselves in a situation like that. But wait, is it different for guys and girls? I feel like guys sometimes get it as a compliment and we feel harassed. Is there, I don't know, is there, if that's a double standard, but. For me, I felt harassed because um, I used to work in one of these high-end restaurants and at the time, I was dating a man who was like double my age. And yeah. one of my male co workers, I, I was like a server there, and he was also a server. And yeah, he has hit on me. But when he found out that I was dating somebody who was much older than me, he was like, oh. But he was starting to question like our relationship and our sex life. And I was just like, this was also during work. Well, I was like, trying to wait on some tables and I'm just like you really want to talk about this here and now I mean it's already inappropriate that you want to comment on our sex life but here in front of everybody it was one inappropriate and so embarrassing and just plain plain offensive so (laughs) for me it was it was just like it's not even like oh yeah I I take that as a compliment that you're like hitting on me and but yeah. afterwards, making those kinds of comments was just like uh, uncalled for. Yeah, time and place, you know, that for that kind of stuff. Like for like most of the time, because I have always kind of worked freelance. I've never had to work like in an environment with other people, and like you know whether or not my con- like how I react to things like affect my consequences. But for me, because I'm a, I'm actually like a super introvert. Like if a guy won't shoot his shot, like I'll never know. so but yeah like once you say yes then great if you say no take take the l and go you know it's just don't get persistent like that when you get persistent after you're told no is probably like when it just gets creepy but then guys hold their whole lives you gotta be persistent shoot your shot (laughs) gets the egg or whatever the early bird gets the worm the horny guy gets the girl so (laughs) Yeah. When it comes to relationships, don't treat relationships like you do work. I think that's the rule. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Be so persistent in like trying to get that job, but don't be that persistent in trying to get one person's pussy. Like, don't do that. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I worked with a director once who always would write in an episode of his series that we were filming a scene that I am uh, in my land, like half naked or making out with him or it, it was always, uh, or I'm handcuffed, always something inappropriate. And then I would like feel horrible. I'm like, I don't think I should be doing this. Like this really makes me feel uncomfortable. And he would make me feel like I'm a little peasant who doesn't know like what comedy and filming is. He's like, I don't know mm-hmm. how things are where you're from, but like, if you wanna like be famous and do stuff, like you gotta get out of your shell. So he wow. sort of talked me into like that, it's it's my fault and then like a year or two later i was like this guy totally took advantage of me and i called him up and i was like you're gonna take down everything i ever made and if i ever see you posted anything with my name you're fucked and he resisted for a long time he was like no but this is art why are you being so close-minded i was like no you're taking advantage of me take it down or we're gonna have a problem so he really took it down 
Wow, look at you standing up for yourself. I know. Thank you. Know. And this My was a goodness. producer. This was like, these were all like just cut. You know him. <laughs> you know this guy, by the way. I don't want to say Sorry. his name. Hey, He's a disgusting you slob. Pig Latin? Name, name. Sorry? Could you say his name in Pig Latin? Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, uh, J.M. are his initials. J.M.? Yeah old comic has a lot of like web series uh, and they're mostly inappropriate and i talked to shabli you know shabli a mutual friend and shabli is like oh yeah he always made me do naked scenes for nothing for nothing and like talk us into it like oh this is art oh my god you are a comedian and then he would give us gigs he would book us theaters to do and then like oh actually he's so nice like they sort of mind fuck you it's, yeah. it's horrible. Like, if you, if you don't learn how to stand up for yourself, it, it, it can Did get Can you really tell bad. me this guy's name? Because I will do those naked shoots. <laughs> for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to sure. say, there's actual people sure. who are comfortable being naked on camera, but we also don't do it for free either, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, I, 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 I think that everybody should do whatever they feel comfortable doing. Nobody should talk you into anything or write an artificial scene where you are in a bra and, and like, oh, now you have to kiss me. That's what the scenario says. And he wrote the scenario. So that's the part like where I'm not comfortable with. If we, if we signed up for something, okay, cool, let's have fun with it. But if you're doing it on purpose, then we're going to have a problem, you know? It's like yeah. Tarantino putting in like foot fetish scenes. You know? Yeah. Sort of, yeah. 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 <laughs> and that the taking advantage part comes like when you're new into any industry, you're looking to the people above you for guidance. And also it's like you want to be liked. You want them to like you. You want you want to, you want it to be like good vibes and they can help you get to the next step. Or like everyone knows everything's about relationships. And it's like yep. in the moment you're like, I want to piss this person off. Uh, you feel like pleasing them or like, you know, like being careful with their ego is the way through the situation. Cause you're like, well, yeah. I don't know how they are when they're mad or feel rejected or, you know, so you're just like, let's try to just not do damage here. And that's what sucks. Cause it's like, you know, I also don't know the norms of this industry. Like, is this, do I have to just be cool with this? And then, yeah, a couple of years later, you get older. You're like, that motherfucker. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I should have listened to my gut. Gut is never wrong, you know? Um, yeah. He's a piece of shit. I, Anyways. Yeah, um, it, for the never have I ever, my initial instinct was to go with, you know, my girlfriend and I are both comedians, Carl, and she's a comedian also, and hit on me, but I have a better one. Um, when I was 19, I worked um, for Old Navy. I worked at Old Navy, and I had a, a my boss is one of the managers was a homosexual woman. and uh he told everyone else oh, i really like mike i really like mike. I'm really into chubby guys they, because he likes to cuddle with guys and he would always like you know kind of be like flirtatious with me and then uh we had a christmas party and he asked me to slow dance with him and i gave him a slow dance so it was a dude who had a you know? did he hook you up with any performance fleece or anything for free or <laughs> I did, I did, uh, not, he didn't hook me up with it, but I did stop him when I worked with Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, so you slow dance with a dude because you were like, well, why Yeah, not? it was, it was all, I was wasted at the Christmas party and it was fun. Yeah. I still normal. have the picture. I'll, I'll got to find it and post it. It's a great picture. That's normal. Dancing I know that made his whole year. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Dancing is just hugging. It's all good. <laughs> Exactly. Imagine like ne the next day at work or whatever, and he's like, "Can we just slow dance, uh, like by the car?" <laughs> like we really bonded. Yep. Okay, so never have I ever caught somebody cheating on me. Like walked into a scene and oh, like, had a horrible experience. Like like lifetime. Lifetime. It doesn't have to be like they were like having sex per se, but like. I walked into something that I shouldn't have and it broke my heart. Ooh. Is this too deep? God, no, no, this is good. <laughs> but it's Nothing so like good. <laughs> no, this is life. This is the realness. Yeah. Right? God, I have not walked in and like seen a thing. It's always been like discovery or whose hairs are these, you know, and then putting mm -hmm. it together and 
Yeah, but never, no. No, nobody, anybody caught your girl, girlfriend Great. kissing? Uh, I've, I've caught like a conversation on a cell phone, you know, but. There you go, yep. Yeah, that's kind of, mm. like I knew something was wrong and like he'd been like distant, like we both, um, before, before porn, I used to be a production designer. So, and he was a sound, uh, a sound engineer. So we used to work on set together, but his hours were different than mine. Mm -hmm. So a few days, like we were living together and a few days would go by and he'd be like, oh, I had to run late on set. So I just got a hotel room. And then you just kind of start thinking like something might be going wrong. And then he comes home he's, um, and he's like hop in the shower. And like, I, I, I completely do not advocate for like looking into other people's cell phones. Wait a minute, this is like, he came home and went immediately into the shower? Well, no, like oh. later that day after he came home, like he was in okay. the shower and I was like, I'm gonna peep at his phone. Like I would never, do I've never done that since, never done that before, seriously. But something felt wrong and like full blown conversations about like what they've been doing, <gasps> where they, you know, and all of that. And so I confronted him and um, it took him like, like two whole bottles of wine to finally like come out and say that he had, and then he moved out the next day. <gasps> oh shit. Wow. Oh like my God. God. Feelings, Jesus. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, and then, and the funny thing is, so this was before porn and obviously once I got into porn, he obviously reached out to me to see if we could like hook back up. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, Josh said he Of course. Yeah. Plus you are so beautiful. So he was like, I need this back in my life. So there you go. Bobby, Bobby burned down somebody's apartment when she said no to him. <laughs> what? I, I don't think that's how the story went. <laughs> For legal okay. purposes, I'd okay, like to hold explicitly on. You state broke up with how. a girl and then her apartment was no, burnt all right, out. All right. I'll I don't tell know the if story. that's yeah. All right. I went to Jamaica with my then girlfriend at the time, although we were like really having issues. Um things were going well. We had been like split but still kind of seeing each other. There was another guy and um everything was going well in Jamaica. I thought we were going to like really fix things. And then the last night there, her apartment back in Pennsylvania burned to the ground and she had nowhere to live. So she had to move in with the other guy. And <gasps> oh, I lost wow. advantage. This is one of the most horrific breakups of that I've heard of my, I'm sorry that I brought it up, Bobby, but I'm like, to. This no, is no, you're wild. good. This girl, her apartment burns to the ground. Did you know there was even another guy at the time? Yeah, like we had kind of fought about it. And like, I was like, all right, like I'm in Jamaica. It's game time. Like I'm going to play to win. And I had been putting on a good show and like things were really going well. And then literally the night before we were supposed to go back. Oh, man. So you burned it down for nothing, basically. She went yeah. with another guy. I, my alibi is I was out of the country. <laughs> Wait, you were in Jamaica together or you were just... Yeah, we were. Her best friend was getting married. So, like, you know, you have to plan to go out of the country, like, months in advance. So things are going great, right? But, oops. So. Oh, man. I hate her for some reason. I don't know her, but I No, really like, it was a good... It, it wasn't her fault. She's a good person. It just didn't... Don't be me. nice, Bobby. Don't, don't be... be nice, stop Bobby. being nice. She's yeah. a dumb whore. You broke your heart. Oh. You know what I mean? You're like giving her rum punches left and right. <laughs> rum punches you in the fucking heart, you know? <laughs> Whoever ends up with Bobby is going to be the luckiest girl ever anyway. So yeah, who cares? Some teeth on him. I don't know. I just... <laughs> who cares? To just guess, you know? So can I share my brief story? I lived with somebody for a year and we were supposed to get married, but we broke up eventually because we couldn't have sex anymore. We just didn't have the spark, right? And uh, it was obviously him, not me, but sure. <laughs> and uh, after, like, we really tried to fix it. And we were even, like, considering, like, couples therapy, this and that. And after a while, we're like, no, we're like, we're bros. We're bros who live together. This needs to stop. So he's like, okay, uh, let's like, you, you're going to find another apartment because I moved into his place. And he gave me like a month or two to find my place, which was fair enough. And we agreed not to date other people while we still live together. Like, let's lend this on a friendly note. I'm going to move out and then do whatever you want to do. <laughs> so, oh, see, I'm choking already. Corona. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh. So one night I, uh, he didn't come home till like three or four in the morning. And I'm like, this bitch is with a girl. 
and I'm like pretending I'm sleeping. He comes home, lays next to me. We're still sharing a bed. He goes to the restroom and leaves his phone. And I take his phone and it's a girl who says, it was so lovely to spend, spend some time with you. Thank you for walking me home. Uh, this night was amazing. Thank you so much for everything. And I still love the guy, you know, like it's hard. You live with somebody, you know, and I didn't do anything. I left the phone back. I pretend I was sleeping. And then in the morning we were supposed to go to like a friend's gathering and I'm like pretending like nothing happened. I'm like, Hey, did you uh, bring your uh, whatever food that we planned? Oh, don't forget the car keys. And by the way, I know you're fucking another girl. Like I, I, I did it so he doesn't have time to prepare himself. Because if I say, like, I want to talk to you, he's a smart guy. He's going to have, you know, some side of, I was literally, oh, let's, we're late, uh, two minutes. Well, by the way, I know you're fucking another girl. Uh, and our friends are waiting outside. <laughs> movie, that's yeah. like he a was, movie. That is some shit. I know. Movie. And he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like, he couldn't, like, I cornered him so, so this is the formula if you want to get something out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But there's a twist to this story. I sort of fucked somebody else in that those two months, but he didn't catch me. So I was like, just so you know, motherfucker, there's a way to do it. And I've done it. You didn't catch me. So <laughs> this is a, yeah. oh my God. I'm, not proud of, I'm not proud of this whole thing. This was 10 years ago. I was such a stupid kid. I thought that I knew more like it was, it's embarrassing overall, but yeah, I got game at least. The, this mofo, I catch him in like 35 seconds and he confessed in 75 seconds. So uh, <laughs> that's how I didn't get married. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Never married, never have kids. I'm super happy being like a bachelorette like for life. For life? Oh yeah, I'm 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 gonna be forty eight in two weeks and I No, do no way. Oh, wow. Asian. Asian for you, you girl. I am this looking forward unfair. to this. I never would have guessed that. Holy No, but like I've never wanted kids, never ever wanted to get married. I think I was engaged for three days in college. That was it. No, you ever look wanted to have that. Again. I can't believe this. You look like twenty years younger. This is wild. Thank yeah. you. Damn <laughs> girl. I'm almost What kind offended. of cream are you wearing? Um, <laughs> I just do, you know, Asian skincare. Lots of, <laughs> Asian skincare. Lots of lots of double cleansing and serums and face masks. So, oh, oh my god, wow. I knew you were gonna say that. All right, I might have to DM you later for your regime. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super cheap. Like it's super super cheap. Are like I was a I was a Saint Ives apricot scrub girl all through college. Wow. No way. Because so, I went to Sephora today and they bent me over the counter and boned me in the butthole because that's how much money I spent just on like three things. No. It, most, nope. Jap most Japanese and like Korean beauty products are like less than 20 bucks each. Okay, we're definitely DMing you. This is yeah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is happening. Wow. Yay. <laughs> Wait, so you're 48 and then we got distracted. <laughs> what was the rest of what you were saying? I was 40. Oh, yeah. Never wanted to get ever get married. Wow. Yeah. Just have never had a desire to. Both my parents, like, were sta they stayed married and super happy until both of them passed away. But, like, for me, I'm, I like to travel. You know, I like to do things on my own terms. And I knew because I watched my parents, because my parents were, like, super old, because they were born in, like, the 30s. Um, <laughs> they they had to give up so much and i'm i was like going through like a super you know selfish period and i'm still going through a selfish period and i don't think that'll ever end so you know i'm happy with boyfriends i'm happy with girlfriends i'm happy with pets i'm not happy with like a wedding hmm. okay. you know that about yourself yeah um, i feel like i waste a lot of time like not really knowing what i want but Oh, the best thing is getting into a relationship, knowing that it's going to end at some point in your life and knowing that there's an end date. It's so cool. It makes the, the relationship so much more fun. Oh my God. All right. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to be with you. Yeah, the minute you start the bottom, I know everyone's looking at like, this. Are we oh. zoom bomb? look at this milk driver. Although you look like a zoom bomber. Um, <laughs> he is one of my favorite people of all time. <laughs> He is one of the hosts of the Ski Mask Collective, which is a comedy podcast. Mr. Jim Stansel. Wow. Um, thank you for having me, Chris. Thank you for letting me come in late. 
Oh my God. Well, we just lost a person due to Woody Woods internet. So. Oh, perfect timing. That's perfect. And, um, <laughs> Let's see. I'll fill in and not be as good, but I'll try. That's Jim up. Like, what have we learned so far? Oh, yeah. Like, we've all had our hearts broken. And um, uh, we like all the women. Games. Games. All the women have been Denver, hit on it inappropriately. Denver is a super video game nerd. <laughs> well, I just got out of a six and a half year relationship. And now I live in my mom's garage. So things are going really well, if you can't tell. And um, yeah. So it's a big garage. Ladies. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You have a good what happened? You're gonna bounce. What back. happened? Why did you break up? Great question. Great question. Uh mostly not because be women answer. can't let anything <laughs> go. So every time we had a fight, it would just be the same things over and over. And uh that got old for her, got old for me. And uh yeah. Nice. See, this is what I'm okay. talking about. Had he, had he gone into it, or had they both gotten into a relationship knowing that it was going to end and had like a two year end date, then it would have been like awesome for two years. And you're like, at the end, be like, bye, moving on. But that only really works if you're not in interested in ever getting married. So, or if you can guarantee that you won't die in those two years. You know what I'm saying? True. That's, that's true too. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gets it. Morbid, I wish I was there. <laughs> It's like that episode of Black Mirror where you meet somebody and you immediately get an expiration date. You know, did you guys not see that? Episode? Yeah, I love yeah, that. I, I love that story. Hmm. Like, oh, next week. And then some people will be like, 18 years. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, man. I'll take next week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry, am I bringing the mood down here? <laughs> not yeah, at all. Maybe Kelly and Jim Stancil will be perfect for each other because they're both single and ready to mingle. I don't know about that garage, though. I don't know. <laughs> gonna, we're still working on it. We're still like working on it, Kelly. Yeah, Look at it. Hang a poster. Something. <laughs> we're still building. Look at that. I don't oh, know my God. It's not even a fully finished wall. Yeah, Is that a closet? That's why like right. he needs a good woman, Kelly. Come on. He's yeah, got most of the walls, you know. Kelly, I feel I'm duly responsible to inform you. The last time I was on a podcast with Stancil, he shit in a bucket. Uh... Uh, well, I watched one of Chrissy's last episodes, and there was shrimp, <laughs> so I'm like, I, I think we're good. Wait, what Just, happened on the one? Hey, you, you do your thing. Shrooms. Somebody was on mushrooms. Yes. Yes. Oh, Tokyo Cunt Punch was on shrooms. <laughs> She, she like restarted it. She's eating. She's like, you know, out about it. She's like, oh, I'm just eating some edibles, and then like spent a lot of it just like, like she was out. Yeah, because she was she out. She was very high. Yeah, that, that, I, you know, before I come on a show, I kind of want to see like what the show's like. So I watched one of your older shows and I was like, oh, okay. Good for you. Everything goes. We're good. Everything goes. Yeah, you can take drugs, drink, not drink. Um, yeah, it's all fun. It's all good. There'll be no mm -hmm. shitting into buckets on this show. We'll see about that. <laughs> Tokyo Cup Punch refuses to bang Barry Ribs, so I have an outstanding vendetta against her, which I'll. Call her out right here. I'll call oh. you out. There Wait, you go. Wait, like a deal. Like you would have paid her, right? And like at first she agreed to it, and then she didn't. Well, I believe uh, a certain uh, Bobby on this show, and maybe a Luby was there when uh, she was he she was offered a fair amount of change, and she turned it down because if she was ageist against okay. Barry Ribs. Kelly so, uh, and Ember, what what would you what would you charge to sleep with a man who is 75 years old at least okay what would be your <laughs> starting point because i just want to compare what you guys offer to her but nice shape oh. and great spirit good spirit and great beautiful great spirit. sense of humor great, great sense of humor also you know i mean uh, i've seen some really hot 72 year olds lately some of them have looked like total ass but you know but my age gap isn't as wide <laughs> <You know>? yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, it's also important to note both these women are a lot more attractive than Tokyo. <laughs> very Aww. true. Kelly, very so Kelly, true. you're saying that you might do it for free. It depends. If I would not. Have, no, I would not do it for free. I would need something. <laughs> but but I would need something whether it's a 75 year old guy or a 45 year old guy. My yeah. question is: She really from Tokyo? What what's oh, the deal with the Tokyo like a, name? Just like a state. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm originally from Tokyo, so. <laughs> 
I know. Yeah, you exactly. Like, like, why is China's, <laughs> China's and Tokyo's? Get riled like, up. How? It makes no sense. Kelly, your name should be Tokyo Cunt Punch. Exactly. You should. You should change your name just to Spider, because you're I'm actually more like Tokyo. Tokyo Cunt Rub. Not, I don't like <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh, Kelly, I like you. <laughs> so, like, what are your guys starting, like, ballpark? Okay, we got to start with this base number. Like, if you had to pick it. Is this for, like, a scene, or you mean just, like... Um, Jim, would you call it a scene, or would you just call it, like, maybe would it go more in the escorting compartment? Or Yeah, this would be in the escorting compartment. One on one. A one on one. I, I don't do it, so I cannot say, but do you want me to say like hypothetically? Yeah, if you were gonna. If you were gonna. Can we pull up a picture of Barry Ribs? Can we pull up a picture? Hypothetically, I would do it. Hypothetically, I would do it for a good piece of real estate. That Wow. That's Great yeah. answer. Yeah. Great yeah. Like for answer. A big, for a big house in Hamptons or something like that. Oh my God. Well, it also depends gets on what it. he wants in this one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Like, what if he just wants some company? Or if he, if it's just, uh, if he just wants to jerk it himself and just have you Some old guys are nice people. He doesn't yeah, have they them. are. That's, that's just it. Some of them may be lonely and they just want some company. So I don't know. We're all going to get real close. We're going to be like, what? He looks <laughs> like the guy from Back to the Future movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Christopher Lloyd. Christopher <laughs> I don't, yeah, see, the Poor problem guy. with that is that I, I would start thinking Christopher Lloyd quotes during, like, our time together. That would be offensive. That's we're, we're going, We don't need roads. I don't need, like, you know, somebody screaming gigawatts at me. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it for $5,000. 5000 they won't do shit to you. Honestly, in life. that doesn't help that. anything. It doesn't long. change, but it doesn't change your life situation. Like I would do it for something that can change my life. Situation. Like I can rent that place for fifty thousand dollars a month and retire, like you? a house in Montauk. You know, like you have to do it. If you do it, do it smartly. I don't know. Five thousand dollars won't change anything. Not even well, a bit. hundred percent. I hundred percent agree with Luby. Luby's right. You know, as if soon as this like episode drops, Atticus Flinch is going to start a GoFundMe to raise the $5,000, Chrissy. You should have picked a way higher number. Our fans are going to raise Terrible that money. Number. They will. <laughs> That's an they awful will. job. How long, though? Like, are we talking like an hour? Are we talking like... Yeah, exactly. That, too. You have to... Which old guy's going to last an hour? Young guys don't last an hour. I bet Rob's 74 may take a while. True. They oh, there we go. Up. See? You gotta no, milk he's gonna take a He's going to take a pill and last two minutes and just go like... <sighs> So if it's just till That's he it. comes, I mean, I yeah, but how long does he think, does, does he thinks, how long does he think he wants me there, though? Solid 15 minutes. Great. I like Kelly. I like Kelly already, I tell you. <laughs> Kelly means business. Yeah, I like it. Short. I, can't, I, I would be like, that's not even worth it for 15 minutes. We'll pay you for the he full want, hour. He wants to have he's sex for 10 short. minutes and then tell you to stop talking while he's talking for the next 15 Yeah, I think I'm probably going to be like Chris, you go with five grand. <laughs> Listen to his stories for like 45 minutes and then 15 minutes of fucking. Because like, yeah, cause like what happens if he passes out? What happens if he passes out after like 15 minutes and wakes up like two hours later, but he still wants you sitting there? You take his yeah. wallet and you leave. No, that's rude. That no, that's what, no, leave that to Cardi B. Yes. <laughs> I would set up a loud alarm clock to go off after an hour. I'd be like, wakey, wakey. <laughs> yeah, you know. set an egg timer next. <laughs> an egg timer. Let's pull a Bill Cosby on him and tell him that you fucked him. You lie. Oh my God. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Drug him up. I mean, like I could use five grand. That's that's. I mean, like. Chrissy, that's not gonna get you far. Stop saying five grand. That's we'll raise <laughs> that by like, like Wednesday. I have a five grand. So many people for nothing. You're going to have sex with Barry Ribs if you keep saying five grand. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Fans will make this happen. These people have just, money. Just get the money up front because there's a 50-50 shot. When he pops the Viagra, it gives him a heart attack and he dies. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm. I would want to deposit. Mm. And yeah, then I would need, I would need give a waiver. it to me once we're meeting. Like the full See, amount. There you go. Oh. <laughs> now we're thinking. Right. Business savvy. <laughs> yeah. De definitely a waiver. <laughs> yeah. Before take, you ride. Take his vitals before. <laughs> nurse. It really become like a nurse at that point. Yeah. Oh my God. 
Okay, feed him cool. jello and do the thing. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Pimple, do it never have ever. What? Um, it's your turn. Never, never have, have I ever uh, shit in a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> a bucket. Do I a drink bucket. if I did it? Or do I, I peed in a bucket. I don't know if that counts. Yeah. Okay, never have I ever excremented in a bucket. Yeah, I mean, well, well camping. Yeah, exactly. What about a slow cooker? Does that count? What <laughs> the hell? <laughs> so long did you cook it for? I didn't cook it. It was a pot. <laughs> It's like an old cooking pot. I'm dying. I'm only That's hoping really that you disgusting. threw it away after. <laughs> uh, I don't subject I myself to such my pot. I don't know what happened to it. I just knew that, like, he has an ex-boyfriend. He had a lot of roommates. It was always somebody holding up the bathroom. I had to pee like I was at a 10 or 11. And I was like, oh, my God. I don't have 30 <laughs> seconds and piss my pants. And he's like, I have a... <laughs> I don't know why he had kitchen equipment in his bedroom, but he pulled out this like slow cooker pot and I just like <laughs> oh boy in the his bedroom. Like, I just was like speaking of I'm gonna try to... now. <laughs> well, this I, is uh, amazing. I yeah. pissed in a frisbee, if that counts. <laughs> we uh we had an RA who busted two of my friends for smoking pot our freshman year. So we pissed in a frisbee, froze it, and then before uh winter break we slid it under his door so that way it melted and he just when he came back his whole room smelled like piss and i really hope the statute of limitations Whoa. on that is up that's wow how really clever is that yeah i tried i tried peeing in, a, in an empty water bottle in college and that doesn't work when you only are gatorade through. bottle gatorade works because it's yeah wide. but yeah it, it didn't work got everywhere it's a mess i've heard stories i've, I've never done it Mike, what about you? You look like a bucket peeing pistol. outside. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, I've been camping and, and peed in buckets, but not like a really good meaty story. Um, I, I have nothing on this. <laughs> in snow in my You're a lady, Amber. Like all ladies, they're all nice people, and us savages here. Peeing in buckets, yeah. Well, you guys hear this? I'm peeing as I talk. <laughs> wow. We figured. Trying to put the mic towards the. I was, you know I was that they have. Wow. Are you sure you you broke up with your girlfriend because you were arguing about things, or <laughs> it's just for who? It's just for who you are. It's, it's unbearable. probably for, Luby, Luby, It's probably because of who I am. It's the just unbearable. Car. Like, let's say you're a trucker, or you like spend a lot of time like in a car on the road or whatever camping. There are these things that they sell. It's like a bag, and you pee into it, and it turns into a jelly. Yeah. And they throw oh, it out. What? Like a bazaar. Well, yeah. But like in the '90s, that didn't exist. <laughs> what? In the '90s, when I tried doing it with a water bottle, that gel thing didn't exist. But yeah, yeah. I've, I've we been, had um, Rickasaurus <laughs> thought on our show yesterday or the other day, and he said he, like a cat, lays down newspapers in his truck or no garbage bags, and he's shit on garbage bags in the cab of his truck. Ew. <laughs> What are you gonna do? These are the pe These are the, these are the essential workers that yeah we were uh, uh, blasting pots and pans to at seven p.m. He's a trucker. <laughs> Truckers are important, but they should have bathrooms, like actual bathrooms. Yeah. He shouldn't be shitting where he sleeps. He shouldn't be shitting in his truck, like on a flat surface. There's something about shitting on a flat on the garbage surface. Bags. He takes them out. I don't know. Why not then just poop into the bag? That's what I did. I don't know. I don't know. Like a cat. <laughs> He's just like a cat crawling around, crapping in the back of his cab. I, was, I, I hate. I hate peeing on a like a jitney bus. Thanks for having me. Here. <laughs> I always like end up just destroying my my sneakers and everything around me. Crapping in your sneakers, Luby. I hate peeing on a jitney bus. Jitney bus means uh, I'm peeing all over the like little oh, restroom. Going to the That's what it means. I have to pee on the way to the Hamptons. <laughs> My life is so rough. Humble brag, yeah, I know. One time I, I was tailgating at a Limp Biscuit concert and I peed into a big gulp cup, threw it, and huge gust of wind brought it back onto a bunch of people that were sitting around. <laughs> oh, no. the beat That's a story, man. Oh my god. Oh, my god. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to beat. I had a bunch of friends there, luckily, but that was. Uh... 
And if it was a Limp Bizkit concert, there's probably like a lot of other groups of friends that were doing the same thing. Yeah, exa exactly. There was just pee everywhere, probably. Yeah. Wow. And they probably just thought it was hot dog water. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Pee is sanitary. You can even drink it. Yeah. yeah. There's I a good likelihood the Limp Bizkit fans smelled like piss before your <laughs> piss. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mike, have you gone yet? Formally? I'm sorry? Have you done one yet? Yeah, no, I was going to do one next. Uh, just, I was going to say, never have I ever been arrested. Ooh. I'll drink to that. Look at all these badasses in the room. Oh, Mike's here. I know Mike. Mike is great. I like Mike. Mike's so fucking funny. Thank you, sir. I like you too. Yeah. Well, look I didn't have to say that. If you're an actual real person. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I have not yeah, been arrested. I got someone arrested, but I've never been arrested. Come on, Bobby. I got arrested. Uh, Penn State does this thing called Thon, where they raise money for a Ford Diamonds Fund. It's a really good cause. You should look into it and contribute. But in order to, to raise money, you go out with cans, and you stand on the street corner, and like people stop and give you money. And we were canning somewhere illegally, and like all of my group was like, when the cops came, we're like, you can't be here. We're like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, I guess you want kids to die from cancer and just really wouldn't let that cause go until they drove me home to my parents at 21 years old. And we're like, take care of your son. Oh. <gasps> you guilted them. Wow. Wow. Wow, Bobby. So to save the day, we went, there's a, if you go to Penn State, there's an alley in the middle of nowhere, just full of strip clubs. And we just basically went outside and extorted people. And we're like, hey, we just took your picture. Why don't you uh, give us some money for Thon? And we raised more money than we'd ever raised in like a weekend. It was a wow, great Wow, you could be a Times Square like mascot character with that work ethic. <laughs> <laughs> like you just took be a on Bear Rib Street now Team. What? Yeah. That's that's what I do, man. <laughs> okay, Kelly. Mine was relatively, well, it's not, I guess it's not an arrest because it was actually more of a detainment. But, so I'm not from here. I'm originally from Japan. And so I don't, you know, there's certain things I didn't know when I first moved here. So I rented a car. Uh, it was a couple of days late. I didn't realize that when it's late, they could actually report the car for Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Oh, what? No. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. Yep. You can. <laughs> and so they called, they came and picked up the car. And then like an hour later, like the police department came over, asked me questions. I said, well, they already have the car. And then they said, well, can we detain you while we check to make sure there aren't any warrants out for you? You know, because, you, you know, for all we know, you could be like some national car heist mogul. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, so they detained me, found there was no warrants and let me go. But that was still a scary fucking experience. <laughs> Are you Tokyo oh Car Punch? <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo Drift. I, uh, but yeah, I, that was, that was, like, if you're into experiences, that was a lot of fun. If you're not ex into experiences, that was, like, I had anxiety for weeks afterwards. I'm sure. I like how oh, you put that into experiences. <laughs> you're into experiences, like, you know, <laughs> at least you get to see the inside of a jail cell. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. I drank. I was, uh, my arrest was a basic DWI. Um, Classic. I, yeah. Classic. I was drinking literally two blocks away from my house. I drank a half a bottle of Bacardi driving home. And my friend called me and said he was having a party at a hotel room and we needed to pick up cocaine. So I picked him up at the hotel as soon as I got on the parkway, I got pulled over on our way to buy an eight ball. And uh, luckily I got pulled over on the way there and not back. So it was a <laughs> shitty experience, but, uh, <laughs> but I learned my lesson. Wow, the parkway. Wait a minute. Mike, are you a CT boy? Uh, and I'm, uh, I am a Long Island boy. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Close enough. Yep. Well, you know, not just Connecticut has parkways, you know. <laughs> well, I thought he meant the Merritt Parkway. You know, that's what we call it. <laughs> no big deal or anything. <laughs> close, I'm close enough. I'm right across the sound, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Ember, have you been arrested? Thankfully not. <laughs> yeah, girl. 
I, I try to, I, I want to keep it that way though. <laughs> That's good. I will, I will tell you that if you're, if you're marginally pretty, they're really, really nice to you. Like they actually like didn't handcuff me or anything. So nice. oh. yeah, I had that experience as well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, and you look, yeah, exactly. Marginally pretty. <laughs> then they usually are like, okay. But again, this is like, we're talking like college. So oh, things, yeah. things, things oh. have changed since then. <laughs> Yeah, Come on, girl. Yeah. Get hotter? No, I mean, cops don't, aren't as nice as they used to be. Oh. <laughs> so I've heard, yes. Um, hmm, who hasn't gone yet? I can say something. Never have I ever yes. got into a physical fight with someone. No. No, I can say that. Wow, look at all these. Badness. Terrible people you have hey, here, you guys, you guys are like troublemakers of a different variety. Like, I go to jail, <laughs> you guys punch people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I go to jail, too. I, really, I, do, I do that, too. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't really get into a punching match with somebody. This was when I was, like, the new girl in elementary school. And for right. some reason, nobody liked me except probably one person and maybe my teacher. Ooh. And... Uh, Oh, man, I, I don't even, to this day, I don't know why this particular girl new, targeted like, me. I don't know, I think it's the newness. I don't know what it is about, like, dumb fucking kids. It's like, I just, I remember the new kids at my school, and it's like, they're just insta pariahs for no reason at all, other than you just started, you just got here two months later, like, or it, it makes no sense, or you got here, like, a couple years later. These kids crazy. are horrible. Kids are dumb. Yeah, or they don't know you yet. So they got to test you, you know? I don't know. I was getting like dirty looks from day one. So I gave them dirty looks too. And then they, she finally corners me in the girls' bathroom and just like <laughs> wanted to fight right then and there. But I was just like, I, I'm not going to be a part of this. So I ran to the playground shaking. I, I was not feeling well that morning oh. already as it is. Like, I felt like I was coming down with something. And she followed me with her girlfriends. And she was like, why did you run away, huh? And I was just like, because I didn't want to fight or anything. And if I get pissed, then I could possibly hurt somebody. And then she was like, okay, then show me what you got. And then she started kicking me. Her girlfriend started kicking me. But at that point, I was just like, I don't want to do anything. So I started crying. And then this girl was actually really tall, by the way. And just for reference, I am 4'11". She may have been like, I don't know, 5'6", five, five, or something like that. Jesus. I'm 5'6". Like, so. She's a giant no big girl. Deal. So that's You're when I five, stood up six. and just like, <laughs> that's when I stood up and grabbed like a, a bunch of her hair. Because she had really long hair and just dragged it all the way down to the ground until she and her girlfriend stopped. But girls, man. Girls, girls are man. I, I could not, I don't know how to punch. I didn't like slap her or anything but i like grab like a whole bunch of her hair like you didn't think like fun, fun, yeah like this I, and she, she was like let go let go and then i was just like no hell yeah that'll teach you <laughs> so wait, they ganged up on you it was like multiple against one yeah i mean to, i i don't remember exactly how many girls there were but probably four of <gasps> but uh, she, they left me and her alone and of course those the, the other kids are like fight 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 <laughs> wait you said it was like David and Goliath alone? <laughs> wait what sorry wait, one of them one of the girls asked you for a loan no oh, no <laughs> <laughs> oh by the way <laughs> talk about mixed signal <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks oh a loan two percent a month <laughs> oh god fights are so i was thrown into a garbage by two girls in eighth grade so that's a oh fact my gosh. <laughs> oh whoa so maybe that has something to do with everything else <laughs> to be fair them? you asked them to walk you home no 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 i was bullied i was bullied i was really bullied <laughs> and then i came over the top and became the bully Ooh. it's so serious yeah whatever yeah i don't know it's in the story. and then it took a shit in their bucket <laughs> Shit in a bucket, and I uh, did something. Stansley, you ever been in a fight? You look like a fighter. Sick of this. 
You look like you could take a punch, Stancil. I know. I've taken a couple of punches. Um, Tell a story. Solid looking. He seems seems malleable. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Makes squishy. You know. Wait, what was the original Never Have I Ever? Was uh, Physical fight. Fight. Physical fight. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm honestly, I'm not really a fighter. I've been in my fair share just for living the life I lead. Um, but I did get in a fight. When was the last time I was in a fight? Oh, you know what? It wasn't a fight. This has nothing to do with anything. But I once pushed a kid into a pool. <laughs> this is like back in the day. I once pushed a kid into the pool like way back and like swimming like camp. Like we're probably, probably like you know, 10. And then uh, I didn't know we could, like, as a gag, because it's funny to push kids in the pool who aren't ready. (laughs) And he couldn't swim. And I didn't know that. So then I went in and pulled him out. And they didn't know I, he didn't know I pushed him in. And nobody else knew I pushed him in. So I was hailed as a hero. (laughs) And boy, I never told, and boy, did I never tell them the truth. (laughs) (laughs) I know if you're watching this right now, right? Yeah, unless they're watching. Oh, I don't know. He's probably autistic. He's probably not watching that. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of our fans are on the spectrum. Oh, boy. There he goes. <laughs> uh, we love it. That's just what I do. That's not an aggressive thing. Speaking of on the spectrum. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Fuck you, Bobby. <laughs> I one time was I in as a middle school, and Shaniqua Colbert challenged me to a fight outside the Spanish deli. We had two delis by the middle school. This is like, kind of, like I never even uh, analyzed this until now. Like we had the regular deli and the Spanish <laughs> deli. This is what everyone called them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. But the Spanish deli was, was far, far, far better. It was not pretentious. You could get the Lucy candy. You could get everyone got their Lucy, like sour gummy worms there. You could get like bags of sour was this- belt. Was the Spanish what? deli just a bodega? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it might have been. That might have been my first bodega. I didn't even, nobody knew the word bodega because we're like, there was like a few Spanish kids at the school. Is there like an old cat walking around? <laughs> there were no cats, but there were a lot of like pork rinds and like pineapple <laughs> soda. And it's like all the elements were there, except, yeah, I was like, it's in Rockville Center. I just, nobody was <laughs> bodega. Oh yeah, Spanish deli, meet there after school. I was shooting my pants, so worried, but I was like, I can't not, you know, I can't be like a puss or whatever. She was way taller than me and like scrappier. I was like, let's see how this goes. And she just didn't show up, so. Wow. Wow, that's a win. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) What about you, Bobby? I mean. Um, All right, this, I think, I went on a date with somebody I met on a dating app, right? We get there. Which one? Up. No, no, no. This is a real person. <laughs> we show up, meet at wherever we're going to meet. Like, I see her pull in, and then I see this big pickup truck pull in behind her, lifted wheels, and I'm like, oh, boy, this is going to be interesting. So I get out, and she's like, oh, my God, that's How my long ago? How long ago was this? Oh, like four years. Not long. Not long. Uh, right. We'll say, no, no, no. Actually, let me do the math on it. It's probably about seven years now. My bad. All right. Not um, long. Go ahead. 2013. Okay. So he pulls in. She's like, that's my ex-boyfriend. I'm like, all right, you just go inside. Like, I'll take care of it. And I know, like, three of the guys I play pickup uh, soccer with are inside. So, like, Yay. I only have to get my I only have to get my ass beat for a few seconds, like, till they come break it up. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to bluff my way out of this. And he's like, hey, that's my girlfriend. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sounds like your ex-girlfriend, buddy. But uh, listen, I don't know her. This is our first date. I don't even know if I really like her. But what I do like is to fight. And I really got nothing to lose. So I hope you came to kill. And as soon as I said the kill, he punched me in the face <laughs> like an hour later. I don't, I don't know the rest of the story. Luckily, my friends came and broke up the fight. <laughs> wow, you said all the wrong things. Yeah, no, I tried wow. to bluff my way out of it. And he called my bluff with a right hook. Wow. God bless you. That's how it sucks to be a guy. It's like I fighting is such a, it's like the worst part about being a dude, I think. <laughs> That and foreskin. I don't know. To be honest, <laughs> if you were on a date and the guy came in and like pussied out of a fight, there's no chance that date's going well, right? Right. Yeah, I would secretly like not 
quite respect him. Like I wouldn't want him to get injured. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want him to like pop a tooth out either, but. But you would expect him to pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the first date, you have to pay the bill. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Imagine oh yeah. One date, you know? Just Bobby's one. Bobby's got a black eye, just fucking, if you're like, you're 20 or 25. I'm still crying. <laughs> Thank you. This I isn't about up? the service. But I hate when I'm arguing with somebody and my boyfriend tells me to calm down, whoever the boyfriend is at the time. Because I'm like, because right they, they know they have to, you know, take care of stuff if it gets bad. But I, at the moment, I'm like, you're such a pussy right now. And I really want, I want to fight with this guy. You can walk away. Like I had a situation and then the guy I was with, he's like, no, no, she's very sorry. I'm like, I'm not sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Don't he's not with me. me. Yeah. No, he's not with me. He can leave. He can leave. I'm not sorry. So you can talk to me. Like I get so like angry with people like in certain situations. So I hate when the guy pussies out of it. I, I mean, I, I'll take the beating. I don't care. If you want to leave, leave. But don't apologize on my behalf. I hate that shit. Wow. That annoys me. That's impressive. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Boundaries. I don't know. I never got beat up, though. I got attacked a few times, but nobody beat me up for real. Yeah. Maybe if I, like, got punched, I would, like, finally realize how bad that is. And I would just not be, a, like, a fake badass as I am. But, uh. I don't know. Don't wish that's for that, though. Don't, don't wish for that, though. That's, yeah. It's bad, probably. Oh, shit. Yeah. The minute you put it out there, like, next thing you know, like, tomorrow night, like, you're going to get punched in the face by for some Tomorrow reason. at 2.30 p.m., no, Bobby say, will be punched. What time are you coming in for morning? We can take care of this problem right now. <laughs> Admit it. Deep down, you always wanted to punch me. No, I'm worried. Your... I'm worried I'm the guy who always pussies out because every time we do a man on the street bit, I'm like, ah, I don't know. I think we'll get in trouble. And Luby's like, stop being a pussy. <laughs> no, that's I'm not like, true. I'm... You're the voice of reason. I'm an asshole. Yeah. All right. Barry's the only one that's going to get decked soon. So <laughs> Very soon. Oh, Barry's getting He's decked get for decked. sure. Every for time sure. he steals these crutches, I'm just waiting for somebody to punch him in the back of the head. Just to give Ember, Kelly, and Mike some background. So, like, these – so, Bobby Luby <laughs> – well, Stansel knows about it, but, like, we the, the same older guy that we asked how much it would take to have sex with, that guy we do, like, man-on-the-street bits with. Where yeah, we I know Barry very well. People. What? Wow. I know Barry very well. Oh, yeah, yeah, Barry Ribs. Talked to, we interview homeless people on the street for like we give them a couple dollars I guess and but like a lot of these people are like on a lot of drugs and you're just worried they're gonna fucking stab a needle in your neck you know it's like it's fucking New York City during the pandemic so it's like the cream of the crop anyway. and Barry's favorite thing to do is if a homeless person has a crutch when the interview's over he steals the crutch and runs away with it <laughs> then he comes back oh and we give him like five bucks and they're like oh that was hilarious so it's all good but Somebody's going to so, not know we're joking and absolutely just deck them. funny. Today, there was a guy with a kid. Oh, yeah. Once, like, homeless people get wind of, like, oh, someone's giving out dollars for, for what? I didn't talk to you. Then they, then they, like, swarm you guys. And there was a guy with a cane, like, really bent over, like, really selling it, you know? And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm down. And then one of you challenged, like, him to race Barry. And he agreed. The guy with the cane, hunched over, agreed to race Barry. And we were like, what? <laughs> They were like, ready, set, go. This guy pff, takes off, holding his cane, but sprinting like he doesn't, obviously doesn't need a fucking cane, running so fast. I mean, like Barry's like older and he's like, but I also running as fast as he can. And it was like, it blew my mind. I was like, what? Barry totally pushed him out of his way because the guy was about to win. Yeah. The guy yeah, with the yeah, back, yeah. like a question mark. Yeah, yeah. But it was all Bobby's idea. I was very impressed that he oh, managed to do all of that. It was great. As soon as the race was over, he's back, like, hunched over. Oh, yeah. Like, <sighs> and everybody on the street turned around and was like, because just there's nothing fun happening in the streets anymore. It's so. a miracle. I think people really appreciate it. <laughs> every every time that, we get a crowd, I'm... Ribs run. <laughs> I did not realize how much of a crowd you guys attract. Every we time always, we get a crowd, yeah. I'm scared. I'm like, oh, they're going to be angry at us. And every time they're like, oh, that was awesome. That was so fun. Like, New York is dying for people to be doing weird stuff again. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lady and yelling us in the street, like, how dare you? Almost like she wasn't saying you're taking advantage of him. But it was like, that was the feeling of what she was saying. And it's like, you moron. Like, 
They're getting five bucks to do something. But we always talk to them first. We kind of warn them, like, we're just fucking around. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't, it's fine. And they're like, they have fun, I think. Like, I don't know, but Christy and I today saw something. We, we tried to uh, talk to one homeless guy. And oh. uh, he was like, sure, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. But he was so poised and he was like a prophet. He was talking himself. like it was unbelievable. And we it's caught him, fly. Christy and I caught him, yeah. that he like sort of uh, uh, turned back a little bit and took a toothpaste. He's and eating sucked a toothpaste. It so <laughs> his breath doesn't smell. And that was such like a human... No, it, it humanized him for me. It broke my heart. Like it broke my heart. I couldn't take it. I was like, this is a person. This is a person that has dreams, that shits, that, you know, like wants to have a nice <laughs> breath. It was, yeah. 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 God knows where. He it comes was a little, on stairs at uh, Penn Station. He, he looks <laughs> like he might, but he said um, uh, he doesn't have much sex, right? Is that what he was saying today? I don't no, remember. That game. No, he had sex. He had sex the, yesterday, he said. Oh, remember? the Gino. Yes. Sorry. My bad. My bad. I was like, damn, this homeless guy is getting more action. But they do seem like we talked to him before and then we talked to him after and they do the they do seem to appreciate it because like Barry treats him like a normal person. Like he asks where they're from. He doesn't treat them like a homeless person. It's not taking like advantage so of them. He yeah. just treats them like anybody else. And so like for 10 minutes, they get treated like a normal person. Nobody's looking at him as a beggar or like ignoring them as they walk by, like somebody's giving them attention. So it really seems to brighten their day that's why i think it's cool that we keep doing it because at the exactly. end of the day like 95 percent of the people just don't even acknowledge them as a human when they're like give me a dollar you know and so like, right. like here here's a microphone 100%. Yeah. and so i think they enjoy it good You're point Bobby. god's work and who better than barry ribs oh barry's the man <laughs> But Barry was homeless, like, years ago. He yeah. was living in yeah, his Yeah, Barry knows all these people. I mean, no way. Best way. I never like, knew this. But, like, he was legit homeless. Yeah, so. I mean, is he not homeless now? <laughs> There's no proof that otherwise. <laughs> Come on. He doesn't even have a hot plate in his house. Come on now. <laughs> wow. I never knew this. You're in a fucking yeah. garage, though. <laughs> yeah, I used to live in a house. Yeah, this so time last Barry. year, I was in a Just house. Just like Barry, he used to. <laughs> this is it's not, not even finished. Oh my god, am I gonna to turn into Barry ribs? ribs? <laughs> we are all going to turn into Barry ribs. You're all. One you could only be so lucky, guys. Let's what all have, have done? Barry ribs. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, then we have time for like one more. Does anybody have like one more? Never. Yeah, I've got. I've got. You know, we've been kind of serious today, so I've got like a funny one. very so, serious. I'm sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. So never have I ever um, had porn make me late for work. <gasps> porn, no. Masturbating, yes. Sex, yes. Exactly. Masturbation, yes. Yeah. Sex, yeah. Has sex yeah. ever Sex been and porn. Uh, sex and masturbating, but I don't know if porn itself yeah. has made me late. I, I went through uh, like a six month phase where I was like, I can't start my day until I've had an orgasm. Yes! Fucking A. I, can't so I can't go to sleep. To I can't go to sleep if I don't oh, see, do mine it. Mine was the opposite. Like, like, Cause it kind of like energized me, like get going for the day. Like I got, like, at least I've gotten like one thing done. Yes! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> an orgasm, yes girl. <laughs> at least I've got one thing done. I can now proceed with my day. So like I did that for six months and then I was I actually like, Oh, this sorry. is probably like some psychopathic behavior, so I had to stop it. <laughs> I don't know how far Kelly lives from my garage. So we, can get married. we can get married if you want. I mean, it's not a big deal. Or anything. Not the marrying kind. Not doing oh, all right. I had this long conversation. You still come to my garage if you want. I called out from work <laughs> once just so I can have sex all day. Is this a two door garage? <laughs> <laughs> it's a it is a it is a two door garage. Okay. It is and and my little house is also a, a two door house, so no big deal or anything, <laughs> but uh you won't find Are you that. The garage in of the house you used to live in? No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> or just a completely separate garage. No, no. It's no, it's actually sadder than that. 
because uh, I'm at my mom's house in oh, her right. garage. So it's really more depressing than if I stayed in my ex's garage. Um, yeah, yeah, that so. that would be even that would be creepy. That would yeah. have been very creepy. Yeah, it'd be creepy. <laughs> nice sledgehammer. Got a sledgehammer though. That's what she said. Yeah, that's not what she said. I'm telling you. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so, um, Kelly. Yeah. Did you? Did Did you say like the time that you were? Oh, right. You were, you were a master. Yeah, I would do like a six month psychopathic period when I have to like come in so I can like start my day. Now that I say it, it sounds even creepier. No, it's not <laughs> it's not creepy. Creepy. no it doesn't at all. It's yeah. not creepy. <laughs> It's something that you want to do that, that day. Good. I might start feel good that. right off the bat. Yeah, know? but I've had it like make me late for work a couple of times or like meetings. So yeah. <laughs> That's so interesting because I wonder if there's like a little sneaky bit of self sabotage in there. You know, like you're delaying. Oh, yeah. There's something about um, like delaying. Like I read this, I think, in psychology today. Like people who like don't pay their bills on time or don't leave on time. There's like something about the drama of that that's like addictive it's a rush i was yes. gonna say were you like addicted to porn or I'm masturbation close. or both i'm still addicted to be to masturbating but not necessarily porn like i don't watch a lot of porn these days because i know everybody so like i've been watching a lot more hentai mm. than i watch oh porn. snap really yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. what yeah. kind what kind like is there a certain oh. fetish or because like, you know there are certain so places. much hentai out there plus i, I speak japanese so i understand the japanese Ooh, ones. Can you say something in japanese i'm sorry what can you say something in japanese come on kelly tokyo can you, can you do I big said, teary I eyes so many words i don't know where to um <laughs> well, not about the you, like, in japanese uh porno daisuki which is i love porno Ooh. wow Oh. I might be late to work now. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like hentai, Kelly? Well, because like regular porn, because I because I've been in porn for like over a decade, I kind of know everybody in all the scenes, so I know all the backstories. So there's like all this like, oh, they don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> They're just pretending to you know to like each other for the scene, you know that kind of stuff. So yeah, like, I can't get mentally fun. into it because I know them personally. So have you watched any of mine then? <laughs> I probably have. You know, sometimes I hope really you do. Yeah. I will now. <laughs> I'll I'll look at your stuff too. Yay! I'm gonna watch both guys A couple of purrs over here just be like hi. <laughs> oh it's the nicest thing ever. It's so supportive. I know how sweet. Yeah. Bobby, like would you jerk off to mine if I jerk off to yours? I already have. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Me and Bobby are going to trade some vids after this. <laughs> well, guys, this was fun. I mean, we could stop at this point, but I feel like there's like, I don't know. Glad I jumped on this. Good vibe here. This is a good group. You guys um, are fucking let's great. Let's go around the room. And plug ourselves where people can find us, follow us, support myself. us, etc. Bobby. Uh, the East Side Dave Show every Tuesday at seven thirty. You can follow me at Bobby underscore Tamburo on Twitter. Jim, did you guys officially move the show? Uh, has not been officially moved, but there okay. is a show if you're in the tri-state area. The show gets rained out. I will be there if it's Sunday. I, I think it is probably going to get rained out. It's almost officially going to be on Sunday where Bobby Timboro can be in attendance in and Greenwich, if Connecticut. Not, if it happens Saturday, you can find me in Akron, Ohio performing. If you want to come, just hit me up, slide in the DMs. I will absolutely get you tickets. We can't have that many fans in Akron, Ohio. <laughs> awesome. Mike. Uh, you can catch me uh, on the Domestic Disturbance podcast. It's uh, every Tuesday and Friday night at 9.30 p.m. on govsradio.com, G-O-V-S radio.com. It's myself, my girlfriend, Carla Okerson, Tim Saliani, and we fight about politics. Awesome. Yeah, and Carla is super funny, too. I'm oh, I know your girlfriend. Yeah, you know Carla, yeah. She's yeah. Awesome. She's great. Oh, yeah. I just realized who she is. Oh, baby. It's a small world. Okay, Stancil. Yeah, at Stancil, Jim. 
at Stancil with a C. That's it. And uh, I don't know. Watch, follow Ski Mask Collective, I guess. And uh, thanks for having me, Chrissy. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like I want to send you like a monogrammed bucket or something. <laughs> I'll shit right in it. I'll <laughs> shit in that bucket so hard. Luby. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. This was so much fun. I was so enthusiastic. Uh, yeah, uh, Twitter at Luby Popovic, uh, Instagram at Luby Popovic NYC. Morning on Compound Media, Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. Artificial Ignorance on YouTube. Thank you all. This was a lot of fun. Ooh, I love it, Ember. Also, thank you for having me here. It was so nice meeting you all. Um, this Likewise. Was interesting. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter. It is Ember Snow XXX. And my Instagram is Ember number four ever. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe on OnlyFans. I am currently running a 30% off special, and there's some new content going up every day. I'm almost at the top 1%. So trying to get my way up there slowly but surely. You're so like humble. You're like, I'm secretly fucking awesome. Jim's just mad he's using his phone to do this so he can't subscribe right now. (laughs) Yeah, I literally just went to subscribe and I couldn't. (laughs) Right on there. Kelly. Oh, um, I am super stalker friendly. So basically any social network if you type in Kelly Shibari, it will be me and not some other person. Um, I am doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am I am dorkiest on my Twitter. Uh, on my Instagram, I'm constantly telling you to join my OnlyFans or sex me on Sex Panther. Um, but you can find all the links for all of my stuff at clubkellyshibari.com. I love it. Guys, thank you so much for doing the show. This was one of the most funnest ones ever. Thank everybody you, thank follow you. Everybody, support everybody jerk off to all of us thank you so much <laughs> thanks for having me Take care, thank, everyone. Everyone. Uh, thank yeah. you so you guys much are all-